Good afternoon, everyone. This is Edie from Indie Flow. Super excited for you all to join us for today's conversation about mastering music. Um, yay, Trey B says you're ready. What's up, Christian? So let me know if you're tuning in live. Drop a an emoji or where you're tuning in from in the chat. Let me know that you're here. Um, super excited for today's conversation. And just want to put out there something new happening over here at IndieFlow. We've got monthly memberships now available for $20 a month. Um, Laura will be in the chat dropping that link if you want to get signed up at that new um, monthly plan that we are offering. So let's go ahead and get started. What's up, Laura? I see you. Um, so yeah, drop, let me know where you guys are tuning in from. I know Christian's in Colorado, Trey V. I can't remember where you at. Let us know. And, um, I'm going to go ahead and call up our guest today. Um, let's welcome Simon to the stage. You guys are in for a real treat. Simon is a mastering expert. Hello, everyone. Hey. My pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Welcome, Simon. So happy you could be here. Likewise. We've got, some, we've got some people tuning in from New York, from Cali, Brooklyn, Colorado. So we're all over the map today. Excellent. So why don't you, Simon, so please, I'd, I'd love for you to take a moment and just introduce who you are who Master Channel is and yeah, whatever, whatever else you want to share. Yeah. So first of all, thank you so much to IndieFlow for hosting this with us. I think this is a great opportunity for many people to learn about what is still kind of like a dark art, I guess. Um, but yeah, um, so how did I get into mastering? I was actually part of um, a lot of classical things in, in Germany in 2015. But that was also when the whole Deep House scene kind of took off and turned from like an undercover music scene or genre into like mainstream pop sort of. Mm -hmm. And around the time people started approaching me were like, yo, you have good ears, you work in classical music, why don't you want to take a hack at modern music or whatever they were oh. call it. And that's how I got into the whole hype around the first German DJs breaking um, into the international scene. Um, so I did the first few years of mastering in Germany, then I moved to the US for a bit in 2018, learned from one of the Grammy winning engineers about mastering, wow. um, then went to London because, you know, Europe is still kind of like my home, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then uh, two years later, I got the opportunity um, to found Master Channel with my co-founder Christian, because we just realized based on the people we've, we had spoken to and the people we had worked with, that it's, you know, the industry is changing and we, the, I feel like the tooling has to adjust to the new um, circumstances in the industry. And that was really the core motivation for Master Channel. It was like, I was feeling it as an engineer, Christian, my co-founder was feeling it as a producer. And then we realized, oh, actually we have all the perspectives we need to build something that really helps artists kind of boost their career through yeah. uh, some advancement. And that was the, the kickstart for Master Channel. And it's been a year now and users love it. Uh, we love it. So it's, um, and we get to collaborate with cool guys like you. Yay. Yeah. I feel like you, you kind of like open up something that's really elusive to a lot of artists. Like what is mastering? What does that mean? I know I need to do it. So um, it's, yeah, super excited to hear, hear what you have to say today. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go anytime. Let me just share my screen. We're also, okay. also going to have a little demo. So it's not just, you know, awesome presentations. It's also hands on later. And you guys who are here, y'all who are here, if you have a question, um, you can drop it in the chat or hit that ask a question button at the bottom of the screen. And we will get to the questions after the presentation. Yes, we'll have a proper Q and A. Yes. Um, but yeah, otherwise, let's let's dive right into it. So let's we're going to talk about optimizing your sound 
And I think more importantly, what that means for you as an artist, because obviously music matters most, but then also you want to kind of like translate that music or make sure that music translates on different media formats, different devices. So it actually reaches your audience. And this is also kind of like the spirit of this presentation. Mm. Um, but in concrete terms, we're first going to talk about what is mastering, just to recap for those of you who might not be as familiar as, as I am. And then we're going to talk about why is mastering actually important, why you should definitely do it in whatever format or setting, then how to how you can actually Im increase your chances of success through mastering by properly preparing your mix. Then we're going to talk about Master Channel, what makes Master Channel special, and how you can use it to have easy access to mastering. Then we're going to talk about the special intro offer we have going on and at the end, which is usually quite a fun part. Um, we're going to have a Q&A and that's where we can geek out about technical details or any questions you might have. Um, yeah, but let's dive right into it and, and talk about what is a mastering. So I think most of you are probably fairly familiar with the music production process. You know, you have musical ideas, you record something, you add some instruments, maybe you invite singers or you sing yourself on top. And then you have something inside of your computer that sounds fairly decent and that you're kind of happy with. You've probably EQ'd the vocals. You've probably, I don't know, compressed the guitars and it feels decent to you and it sounds good on your speakers in your home studio. But then once you export and maybe show it to your friends on their hi-fi system or you listen to it in your car or on your hi-fi system on the kitchen ready, you, you realize, oh, there's actually still somewhat of a gap between what my stuff sounds like and you know what the industry standard could be based on what you hear on the radio or on, in uh, popular playlists. And okay. this gap is really what mastering is all about. So it takes your mix and takes the best of what you can do and lifts it to the industry standard to make sure it sounds good on all sound systems, on all streaming platforms, to make you aware of potential issues that you should probably fix before distributing all those things. That's all mastering. In the more formal terms, you could say it's the last creative step in the audio production process. As I said, it bridges the gap between mixing and replication, or these days, usually distribution, unless it's vinyl. Right. And it helps you work on your problems because you have someone, usually the mastering engineer or an AI telling you, oh, this is something we discovered that we maybe couldn't fix because it's an error in the recording process that you should take another look at. And okay. at the end of the mastering process, you hopefully have something that you're proud of that you can actually distribute to as many channels as you like. And nobody's going to tell you, oh, but this doesn't sound quite finished. This actually sounds super polished, super neat. This is exactly what I wanted. So um, yeah, that is mastering. And now, obviously, this might be a bit technical. The question is, why, why should you care? Couldn't you just get better at what you're already doing and then maybe bridge the gap yourself? And um, that's obviously a question you get asked a lot, especially by people who maybe use a mastering engineer for the first time or our platform for the first time. But I, I think it really comes down to three main aspects why you should actually master your music. First of all, you want to make sure your music is ready for the world, right? Like there's 10,000s of tracks being released every day. And somehow you want to make sure you're not 60, the one. 60,000, actually. Yes. Thank you for the precise numbers. <laughs> um, probably even more in the future, right? But you definitely want to make sure you're not part of those, I don't know how many thousand songs that just don't sound right, that people immediately skip because they feel like, oh, this is just you know amateur stuff. So you want to make sure you actually meet the standards that people are used to. But at the same time, you also want to highlight what's unique about your music, right? Maybe you recorded an awesome guitar solo or whatever, and you want to make sure it actually stands out. It attracts the listener that might just have discovered your music through a playlist, right? So it's all about finding that balance between fitting in, but also standing out. And then lastly, and I think this is actually the most important aspect in terms of your career in general, you want to make sure you are confident about what you actually put out there. If you know a an experienced engineer or a um, very well engineered system tells you this music actually meets all the standards, then you will probably promote your music in a way more confident manner than you would if you know you were just by yourself and thinking like, oh, this is probably ready, but I'm not 100% sure. And overall, this hopefully leads to you increasing your chances of success because you know you're doing the right thing. You had somebody else 
or something else looking at your music and you know it is now ready to be promoted. And this is, I think, why you should always think about mastering. All right, then the next question obviously is, okay, how, how does that translate from these, you know, abstract terms into, okay, what actually happens technically and, and even musically, right? And what that means technically is that after mastering, you can be sure you have the right delivery formats for all the platforms. So no matter if you want to upload to Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, um, Boomplay, whatever, you will have the correct format so the platform actually accepts your format and plays it back correctly. You also want to make sure that you meet the technical norms of the market. Especially recently, there have been a lot of uh, loudness standards coming out to make sure everything sounds sort of cohesive on the platform. And that's something that can be quite technical to get into if you're just you know, a producer for the sake of making music. So why not outsource that to, to a platform of someone who does this every day, right? And they know the norms inside out. They know when to break the norms, when they don't make sense, all of that stuff that you would have to read up online and that might just be tedious and waste your time. And lastly, and this is actually quite, quite important, um, listening trends change all the time and you might not be aware of it um, because it happens sort of gradually. But 10 years ago, people said mono is dead because everyone's listening on headphones, right? So that's when like, I don't know, um, the first um, headphones shipped with the smartphones and stuff. And so people started listening on the bus and everyone was like, cool, we just have to master for headphones. If it sounds great on headphones, we capture 90% of the market. But then all these smart speakers came out and suddenly you had so many people playing back music in mono, right? And so now there was a focus again on making it sound good on mono as well. So that's also something you have to keep track of. And that's also what mastering is about to just make sure, okay, it's not the listener's fault if it sounds bad, right? Like you are responsible for delivering your music in the best possible way. Absolutely. That's, but that's technical stuff. And then if we go to the musical aspects, um, kind of similar to what I said with, okay, there's already so much music out there that kind of sets the bar for, um, you know, how sonically enhanced it should sound. Uh, you want to make sure you meet the expectations of your genre. So, I don't know, quite often, you know, especially if you start learning mastering, people say, oh, it's just about loudness and, you know, you have to meet these targets and, and stuff. But they, I think, forget one important aspect, which is, like it's it's like the final coat of paint you put on your track and if you are in the hip-hop space for instance you definitely want to treat your low end and your high end way different from i don't know if you were like i don't know a pop producer right in hip-hop you want loud aggressive sounds usually you want crystal clear highs and you want a bass that really cuts through whereas in pop music it's all kind of polished it, it kind of has to fit in everywhere and People might just subconsciously feel like something is off if you're if you don't meet the listening expectations within your genre, be it hip hop or or what else. And that's I feel like something that many people don't don't quite understand or appreciate about the mastering process. And then again, you know, as I said, keeping the balance between fitting in and standing out, you still want to highlight unique aspects of your music, right? Maybe you have it. Going back to hip hop, maybe you have a hip hop track, but you have a guitar riff, which is um, super unconventional, but super cool. You definitely don't want to bury it in like the mainstream sound that you might give an average hip hop track. You want to make sure, oh, this still sounds like hip hop, but there's something new to it. And the soundscape of your song should definitely support those unique aspects. Mm. And an experienced engineer will be able to tell, oh, this is something I should bring out in the mix, or this is something that is just, you know, playing a role on the side. To illustrate this, I brought some examples from my German friends. Um, we're not going to play back audio because usually that's kind of a hassle online. But um, I encourage you to maybe just take notes about these tracks and then maybe take a listen for yourself after the presentation. And then, I don't know, find out if you agree with what I'm going to say or if you completely disagree. But maybe at least appreciate like how much impact mastering can have because I think these examples really showcase it. So well, first um, song I um, brought with me is by Zoe Wies. She's an upcoming German artist, and um, her the, the piano version of uh, that particular single was mastered by a friend of mine in Berlin, Zeno. 
And when you listen to the song, you can definitely tell, like within the first few seconds, okay, this is an acoustic version. Like it's super stripped down, the sound is super raw. It's all focused on her voice and the piano. It, you, you just know it's an acoustic version, right? And it makes perfect sense. And you would expect that maybe, you know, her other acoustic versions would sound similar. But no, there was actually a different engineer at work, in this case, Ludwig from Munich. He mastered a different song. And that acoustic version sounds completely different, right? It's much more similar to the original version. It sounds punchier. It sounds more polished. It's, it focuses more on the overall soundscape and not so much on the individual acoustic elements. So just by using a different engineer, you completely changed the whole perception of the song, the vibe of the song, um, what is conveyed and all those things. Um, so, so that I think to me, like when I, when I look for examples and listen to these songs, I'm like, yeah, damn, uh, I should really have a chat with Ludwig because I, I would have done it the Zeno way in that case. <laughs> Um, but obviously, it's always a subjective matter, you know, like it's, it's not just the engineer at the end of the day, it's a whole team of people making these decisions. But you can definitely tell that it was different people making this record. Awesome. And I just copied those song links into our chat for everyone who's listening. The chat's available even if you come back later. So you guys can check out. Amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Super cool. Um, yeah. And then we have another example, kind of like the opposite end of the spectrum, you know, like I don't know, rock, pop punk, whatever you want to call it. Oh, yeah. By Hollow Boy, I'm pretty sure most of you know this album, very iconic. And back in the day, it was actually mastered by Pete Lyman at Infrasonic Mastering. Super knowledgeable guy, definitely very well known in, in that genre. And you could tell, like it's still, obviously it's, it's somewhat pop compatible, but it sounds like a rock record. It sounds edgy. It sounds sometimes a little bit brittle on the high end. And it, it definitely doesn't try to polish things that shouldn't be polished, right? And, and that, I think, was the DNA of Fall Out Boy back then. But then what's interesting is that three years later, when their new album came out, it was actually mastered by Chris uh, Geringer. And suddenly, the whole, I don't know, my whole perception of Fall Out Boy changed because that album really sounds more like a pop record. You know, it's super polished. It's fairly compressed. Everything is super smooth, even the transients of the drums, it all feels more like a punchy pop plastic thing, as opposed to the previous album, which sounded, you know, still kind of raw in some sort of ways. Right. And again, artistic engineering decision, they, him, he, Chris and the team thought, okay, this is the direction we want to take this into. And it probably made a lot of sense at the time. Um, and now we can see like, oh yeah, just by engineering it, by changing the mastering process, you have a very drastically different outcome if you pay a little bit more attention. Hmm. And so now you can always, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, so what I'm kind of hearing from you is like knowing your genre um, and the, like how you want your music to sound is important. Um, Absolutely, yes. And then also, you know, making sure you trust um, the right people with it, right? So and th this was just to show, I'm not sure if like, for instance, if none of these mastering engineers had touched it, if maybe the mix engineers or the producers themselves would have been able to bring out these nuances that, you know, made the difference between this is pop or this is rock or whatever. Yeah. But by trusting the mastering process, you can kind of change direction pretty heavily. And usually the mastering engineer has a good idea of where to take this, right? Chris, he has mastered tens of thousands of songs, some of the greatest hits ever produced in music. If he thinks this should be taken more into the pop direction, there's a pretty high chance that he's right. Yeah. And you might not have been able to make that call by yourself. Yeah, that, those were some examples. Now the next question is, okay, maybe you have realized, okay, mastering is something I should look into, or maybe you already have. And you're just not sure like which place should I go to? How do I know I can trust an engineer? And we're gonna start with the basics and we're gonna ask ourselves, okay, who does actually do mastering? And that's usually pretty straightforward. Usually you have dedicated mastering engineers. There's plenty of people who kind of offer hybrid things or producers who say, oh, I can master your track for 20 bucks or something. But 
in most cases, I would say it, it can be a great start and it definitely serves the purpose of having a third perspective, judging what you're doing and what your music sounds like. But usually you don't get the benefits of a mastering engineer with massive experience working on, I don't know, up to 20 tracks per day, really having an, kind of like a bird's eye view on what's going on in the industry, where sounds are going, what's upcoming, all those things. That's usually something you should look after when you when you hire an engineer and typically established mastering engineers bring all of that to the table. As I said, and as I showcased in the previous examples, they usually also have specific genre expertise. So sometimes it can be intentional to say like, oh, I want a mastering engineer that has been focusing on pop music to master my rock record because I want it to be taken into more or picked up by more mainstream outlets. Or you could go the opposite way and say like, oh, I have this fairly modern, boring sounding pop song that I um, composed. And now I wanted to, I don't know, have that little extra analog vibe to it. So it sounds a little bit more raw, mm. more original. And then you might choose a completely different engineer that doesn't work in pop music at all. So all of those are possibilities. And another important thing is, which is also the transition towards why AI can be such a good help in this setting is that all these engineers usually have stellar listening environments. Um, I'm not sure how much of you have a home studio or are maybe just setting up one. Usually, you know, you start with a set of speakers and maybe you try to position them so they don't sound, don't sound as bad as they could. And I don't know, maybe you have some diffusers already or some bass traps, but most of the time you don't really know what's going on acoustically in your and certainly you probably don't trust the low end at all, right? Like everything below, mm -hmm. let's say 100 Hertz is probably a mess if you work from your bedroom. And it works well if you have headphones to double check your mix, but there is no way you could probably match the mastering facilities with a linear response down to six Hertz, six Hertz where you can really hear every detail in the low end where you know if something is rumbling or something actually supports all the instrumentation, all of that is usually only possible <laughs> Sorry, in a good listening environment. Then the next question is, okay, I know I want a mastering engineer. I know I want them to have specific genre expertise or I can at least know which direction um, I should go into. And I know I want a good listening environment. Where can I actually have my song mastered? And what's quite common these days is that you go to a facility. So most of the major label stuff these days, um, I would say the major hotspots, London, LA, um, and we see that's usually done in facilities like Sterling Sound, Metropolis Mastering, and obviously they charge you uh, accordingly. And then again, there's plenty of solo engineers in the world, just like I was, that um, are happy to help and that have their own studio work independently and sometimes can pay a little bit more attention to your individual project because they don't have, you know, the let's call it commercial bureaucratic overhead that the facilities have that have to have a certain throughput to be profitable. But then, and this is sort of also why I'm here today, uh, we've seen that AI can do remarkable things in recent years. So if you think of Dolly and all these amazing image AIs, sorry. I just I just found out about Dolly and signed up for their wait list. Um, yes. Can't wait to try it out. Pretty mesmerizing, huh? yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've seen that AI can do so many tasks that we previously thought were human only, sort of, right? Like where we thought, oh, we humans, we're such complex human beings. Um, there's so much emotion in those things involved that there is no way an AI can ever get close to that. But when you actually break it down into several steps, a lot of what I talked about are very, you know, precise, requirements that you have for a master, you know, like you want to make sure you can see the whole frequency spectrum, which for a human translates into a good listening environment. And for an AI, it just means, okay, can I look at the full audio material, mathematically speaking? Mm -hmm. uh, you want to make sure that you meet technical requirements. Those are easily definable in technical terms. And then all the stuff in between, we kind of learned, okay, it depends on which engineer you talk to. So why not kind of encode the engineering knowledge that is out there and build a system that incorporates all of the best aspects of, and tries to replicate the mastering process. And that is what, how Master Channel kind of came to life. Um, Christian had the producer uh, um, perspective. He knew, oh, this is what I want when a master is home. This is the user experience I want. 
And I was like, oh, if I'm ever going to trust an AI, it has to check these boxes. And then I started talking to engineers, how they approach mastering. Obviously, I already had a few friends. And then we came up with a system that mimics how a mastering engineer works and gives you a mastery that is closer to human level than you would have probably thought a couple of years ago. And that is why these days it's a very valid choice to say, oh, I don't want to pay 400 bucks for an engineer. I actually trust a platform that has been fed with um, the input from several engineers for my masters. Mm -hmm. so that's, those are kind of the options these days in the, in the mastering landscape. Now, the next question, um, going from question to question, you now know, okay, maybe I want to go with master channel. I uh, know that mastering is important. I really want to try it out. How do I make sure I actually have the best possible chance of getting a great master back that I can then uh, send out in the world? And for that, um, I usually have a cringy analogy. I usually say like, okay, think of preparing your mix as a dentist appointment, right? Like, what do you do when you go to the dentist? You probably brush your teeth. Um, I don't know. Maybe you don't eat candy. I don't know. Four weeks in advance or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so you definitely want to make sure your mixes are as good as they can be, right? You don't want to be lazy and be like, oh, you know, the mastering process is going to fix it for me. That usually goes to go south, like that rarely ever works. The next thing is you probably don't want to do stuff only the dentist, or in this case, the mastering engineer system does, right? Like if, if you have uh, teeth that are hurting, you don't want to do the drilling yourself and then go to the dentist and ask them if what you did was good. <laughs> um, because I think you probably know the answer already, right? Like you want to make sure you do what's within your means, right? You brush your teeth, so you do the best possible mix, and then whatever is mastering, um, domain, you leave that up to the actual mastering um, part of the process. And then ideally, if it all goes well, you know, you have a quick checkup, a clean polish, and you're good to go, right? And that's the best experience you can have. Absolutely. Um, and if you are, and, and sometimes, you know, like both at Master Channel where people upload sometimes, like we have Grammy winning people using the service, they upload stuff and our engine barely touches it. Because some engineers, when they receive something, their only job is to say, oh, yeah, this is good enough for the world. This is my stamp of approval. Off you go. Right? This is also part of the, the mastering process. Um, what that means in audio terms is definitely make sure your upload format is correct. You don't want any lossy MP3 and 4A type of stuff. You want to give us pure raw audio. You don't want to, as I said, do what only the dentist would do. You don't want to do loudness stuff. You don't want to do psychoacoustic effects. You just want to make sure, oh, my mix actually sets the sound stage perfectly. I can hear everything. I'm happy. And now I send it off for someone to take it to the next level. And if this is still, you know, sounds like Spanish, then feel free to um, check out our guide and blog post. We also have a video with Matoma talking about how to best prepare your mix, um, and that should um, get you started and, and easily have the great master within no time. Amazing. And I'll drop that link everyone in the, in the chat right now. Um, for Amazing. Thank you. For the pre preparation guide. Cool. Hey, this is Matoma and I'm here to give you a couple. Sorry. No worries. That was the video, by the way. That was good promo. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so speaking of master channel, as I said, like a lot of thought has been put into this AI. The AI learns by itself as well how to get better over time. Um, we built master channel really with the ambition to show the industry, you know, what people have been doing in computer vision for like ten years now. You know, like with Dolly and all these amazing artworks, we can do the same in audio, and we're starting with mastering. So Master Channel is a web-based mastering service. It does all the audio processing just like a mastering engineer. So the way we set up the platform is similar to how you would consult a mastering engineer, right? Like you give them your track, you wait for some time. In our case, it's just a few minutes. With an engineer, it might be a few days. And then you get back your audio and you know, okay, this is the best it can be, right? This is how the platform works. Super simple for the user and very sophisticated on the back end side of things. Uh, it's also competitively priced at $11 compared to, I don't know, 
these days it's at 120 bucks per master upwards for a good engineer. And we now offer, and this is very new, a subscription for literally unlimited mastering. So if you really want to stress test our servers and um, make us go nuts in the office because so many people are using the service, then please subscribe and feed us with all of your music and just see what it can do to your music. Yeah. And um, yeah, as I said, zero technical expertise required from you. Yeah, like you can get started in a minute. Just make sure your mix meets the requirements, upload it, and you're good to go. You get the result within minutes. Sometimes it just takes two minutes, um, and you get studio grade master quality. What we sent back is actually, as I said, uh, I'm, I'm, we're going to get back to that later. We have very prominent people using it, and it, it definitely meets the standards of what you would expect from, from good mastering. We also offer different resolutions for the more um, high fidelity people among us. Usually all you need is lossless. That's the standard, you know, like most of you work in 44.1 or 48 kilohertz, it's all you need. Uh, we also offer high res if you do like classical recordings for higher sample rates or sometimes more common. And then we uh, also offer ultimate MQA, which includes a special MQA codec, which is used for instance on Tidal if you wanna get the master batch it's one of the most advanced audio codecs out there. It gives you that extra codec, like polish on the codec side of things, right? So it move, removes pre-ringing from um, digital analog conversion and those type of things. So if you really want to go all in, then you're very welcome to upgrade your experience with the ultimate MQA tier. And I think this is also super exciting. What we've realized, you know, originally when we came up with the idea for Master Channel, we started coding and that type of stuff. We just wanted to build something that we think is awesome. And then we started the platform and people started using it. And then we had, you know, like very prominent people using it. And then they suddenly told us, you know, I'm not only using this for my final release. I use it, I don't know, every time after I finished a songwriting session before I send it off to my publisher or my label, I use it every day to test my ideas to see like how far am I in the mix. So anything I should already take precautions for because it might blow up in the mastering stage. Um, and yeah, whenever you feel like, okay, this is good enough to be sent to other people, why not just run it quickly through Master Channel and see like, okay, what does it do to my audio? And can I feel more confident presenting it to somebody else because it has that extra polish and shine that I might want before I share it with um, anyone besides with myself? That's a really or, great idea of how to use yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And and the same goes for live performances. Um, DJs were you know fairly quick to adopt our service because they have different sets every weekend. They test out new remixes and stuff. But then also like more traditional artists, they also use it to test um, tracks for a live audience. Because obviously, if you have your fully produced and you know mastered playback for other songs, and then you come up with something you couple together at home, it might sound a bit off. So if you run it through a master channel, it meets the level and the quality of all your other tracks. We have lots of beats producers actually using it. You know, these days it's quite common for, for um, hip hop artists to maybe purchase a beat online. Uh, for those outlets, you can use Master Channel to polish your beats, to quality for distribution. We have TikTokers using us. Sometimes I, I didn't even know that would be a thing, but like people now write like 60 second songs or even shorter. And, you know, it, if you put out, I don't know, two of these each day, and you hire an engineer that adds up pretty quickly but with mass channel it's you know flat fee so no big deal but of course majority is still final mastering people use us for their release um we have more testimonials on the site by the way feel free to check that out um but i think without further talking about what we do and you know trying to sell something uh why not why don't we take a look at the platform itself real quick right? let's do it so um, this is the platform, it's super simple. Uh, we're not gonna take a look at this, but we're just gonna click on sign in because, or actually we can see also down here, because right now, if you create an account, you actually get your first session for free, right? So that's super cool. I'm gonna sign in real quick. And now if I click on master now, this is where you drop your mix, right? It says again, please upload a WAV file, 24 bit or better. And this links to the same guide um, that I previously mentioned. And now I'm just gonna upload the mix. Super simple. Let's 
So just so I'm clear, you uploaded, it has to be a WAV file, correct? Yes, WAV file is what we currently accept, yes. Right. We will also accept flag files in the future, but WAV is still the recommended way right now. Yeah. And then these are the tier, these are the tiers that I mentioned, you know, pretty super straightforward, it tells you what you get. And then as I just created my account, I have a free master I can use. I'll just click continue. And then it's going to start mastering. And it says in under five minutes, I'll have my track back. Right. And this is all it takes, right? And once it's done, uh, oh, Christian's even messaging you. Oh, that's super nice. <laughs> um, and then you get a download button and you're good to go. Right. And this is really all it takes. Super simple, no hiccups, no nothing. Wow. Yes, that's how easy mastering can be, you know, from a dark art to like something anyone could try. And as I said, you get a free one if you sign up. So, you know. Definitely worth trying it out. Yeah, to me, I mean, as an artist, mastering has kind of been an elusive thing of like, all right, I've had engineers do it, but what exactly happens there to the music? Are there any, um, like, I know you mentioned loudness. Um, like how loud should your mix be? Should that wave, like how much space? Yes. So mm -hmm. um, you can also read that up uh, on the guide. Um, we recommend everything, anything below zero dBFS. So as long as your audio doesn't fit, you can usually see that in your DAW on the on the master bus. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't clip above zero dBFS, you're good to go. Okay. Everything, everything else is fine. So some people say three decibels of headroom, six, but that doesn't doesn't matter. Like our system automatically adjusts the levels. Ah, okay, cool. So, yeah. so you all can have mastered music ready to go in minutes. And then those of you who are already IndieFlow members, you know that you can distribute your music through IndieFlow. You have unlimited distribution through the platform. Those of you who haven't signed up for IndieFlow, we just opened a $20 a month package um so it's even easier between mastering your music with master channel and then distributing your music with indie flow as well as organizing and um and feedback um those of you who aren't in our discord community you can get feedback on your music so as you're working on your mixes and masters you can also get some feedback from your peers um as to how they're sounding so just want to throw that in there yes go all in guys get get unlimited mastering and unlimited distribution What's mm -hmm. stopping it? Yeah. And join these amazing people. I mean, this is just an excerpt of people you know that have signed up and that use us uh, 30 plus countries, as I said, bedroom producers as well as Grammy winning engineers using us. Um, wow. You know, it's really not a tool for dummies. It's really we talk to VIP users and they tell us, oh, this sucks, please fix this. And we were quick to fix it because we really want this to be a tool for the industry. Because the things that independent artists struggle with are things that the big artists also struggle with, you know, but maybe 20 years ago, you had I know, a week for a session because the music industry was so doing fairly well compared to how many people were in it. And these days, you know, even the biggest artists, they maybe have half an hour sometimes for the voice to record an entire song, record the vocals and send it out. So um, we want to help everyone in, in that process. And so far, people are so happy. We, we haven't really had anyone tell us like, oh, this sucks. I go home. <laughs> Um, and that's that's very rewarding for us. Obviously, you know, put us to the test. If you're not happy, you can always contact us. You can also replace your mix if you realize, oh, I have to change something in my mix. So um, hopefully this, this mm -hmm. helps. Some. And just to illustrate more like um, some success stories from independent artists that we've had. So Rain is one of our uh, most frequent users. Um, he kind of broke through on Spotify recently. Uh, One million streams within four months, kind of starting a profile from scratch. Then we have Rian, he's charting all the time. He still uses Master Channel for most of his releases. He now has a publishing deal with Sony Music. Uh, Nathan Trent, uh, one of the Eurovision Song Contests, contestants for Austria in 2017. He uses us especially for his live stuff. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's a wide spectrum of people. And we try to keep up, you know, like we are not the most out there company yet because we don't have the resources and we don't want to spend everything on marketing. We actually want to build cool tech, but we actually highlight uh, people's releases on our social media. Uh, we also have a playlist that we regularly update with the latest releases. Um, so if you master something and you want extra exposure through our channels, uh, and then also have it seen by, you know, VIP users that, that follow us closely, then um, that's always also an option on our channels. 
Um, yeah, then before we get into the Q&A part, um, just very quickly as a recap, as I said, create a free account. There's nothing stopping you to get a free master and no strings attached. Uh, if you like it and you have another release uh, lying around, uh, you can actually refer a friend. And if you refer a friend, you get um, uh, two more sessions, right? So that's pretty cool. You kind of do the Dropbox thing and just if you have enough friends in your life or you just make friends for free mastering, right? Um, then you can master forever. Otherwise, highly recommend either pay per use subscription. It's 30% off right now for only 25 bucks. I think that's a pretty cool deal. Just master a thousand tracks and you will essentially pay nothing for each master. Uh, yes, um, that is pretty much master channel in a nutshell and mastering in general. Incredible. I hope this helped um, and shed some light on you know different aspects of mastering and, and how we came up with Master Channel and our motivation. And now um, feel free to shoot and, and ask me any questions you have. Yeah. Thank you so much, Simon. I really see this, you know, you highlight at the beginning of the presentation, like basically how important it is to find an expert to do certain things for you. You know, as artists, we have to do we're our own managers, we're our, you know, producers, we're booking agents, you know, and I talk to artists a lot about, you know, defining their processes. So defining your release process, how do you release music? And I see master channel as a re really, honestly, easy is the first word that comes to mind, easy way to create more music. And I want to stress too, with the artists here, like, create the music, you know, create all the music you can. So, yes. um, and you don't have to be an expert at everything. You know, I, I know it's very tempting to be like, Oh, I want to do ABCD. And I'm very proud of that. But maybe think of like, what actually what really motivates you? Where where is your unique spice that you add to the music mm -hmm. world? And focus on, on the music, and then everything yeah. else can be very easy. Focus on your strengths outsource your weaknesses. <laughs> so I know we definitely have some questions in here. And if you guys have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Or again, click on that button, ask a question underneath the video, and you can put it right there. Um, so let's see. Okay. First question we have here. Um, it says there are a lot of online mastering services that use AI, um, what differentiates your services from services like Lander or Cloud Bounce? Absolutely. Oh, I love that question. We Obviously, yeah. we, get, we get it a lot. I'm sure. <laughs> yes. So I think we wouldn't have started Master Channel if we were completely satisfied with what's already out there, right? And the whole AI discussion in technology has kind of like started already 10 years ago when we started realizing, oh, you can do fancy stuff with images. You can distinguish cats from dogs. And the early approaches that some of our competition um, is still using is like, OK, let's do some you know, basic pattern matching. So let's just curate a database of, let's say, 5 million songs. And then when you upload your track, we compare it to what we have in the database. And then we see maybe, oh, yeah, you sound like Katy Perry. Let's use the same settings that we would use for Katy Perry on your music. And that obviously can work if you're very lucky, but it has two main shortcomings. Shortcoming number one, just because something might be reminiscent of something that's already out there doesn't mean that you know you have the same problems in the production process. Um, the sonic material is the same. And then B, what if you upload something that is not already out there? Like what 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 is it going to do? Like it's pretty much random, right? And that's why when we developed Master Channel, we were really focused on, okay, we want to mimic, we want to build an AI that actually mimics the thought process of an engineer. So we don't do any pattern matching and we don't do comparisons to other tracks. We actually extract different benchmarks from your track. And then our AI starts applying different mastering techniques. And behind the scenes in those two to 10 minutes, it actually learns which technique leads to the best outcome. So behind the scenes, zillions of masters are being created and you only get one back, which is the one that checks, checks the most boxes, so to speak. Mm. And this approach allows us to like, if we now get feedback from, I don't know, Stargate, and they say, oh, you know, I realized with my last track, something was wrong in the high end. And we can go back and see like, okay, this is, these are the decisions the AI made. 
And then we can say, oh, that decision was based on the wrong assumption. We have to fine tune that assumption and make sure it's actually aware of you know, certain aspects in the music material. And that allows us to be very responsive to feedback, to quickly change our system, because we don't have to retrain each time with, I don't know, 5 million new tracks, because mm. somebody we can actually see what's going on. And that is that is very, very helpful. But of course, you can be lucky with, with any of those services. Um, my advice is always, you know, choose what works best for you, obviously. Um, and um, yeah, that like that was just, that's the main motivation for us from Master Channel. We were not happy with what was already out there and we think technology can do better. That was our main motivation. But I see we have another question. Where in the world is Master Channel based? Yeah, where the heck are we based? <laughs> we are based in Oslo, Norway, actually. So that's a bit random. But um, the uh, producer and DJ Matoma is actually one of our co-founders and he's uh, based out of um, Norway. So it was very natural for me to also come here. And uh, I don't regret it. It's beautiful. Should all come and visit Norway at some point. Ah, okay. Make sure to focus on yourself, build things that matter. It's very cool. Wow. I would definitely like to make it up there. Let's see. We have one more question here. Um, who determines the industry standard for any given genre? Yes, very good question. Um, I know you're free to answer too. Artists. Like, What's that? You, you're free to, you can answer it too, like as, you know, as an artist. I'm just, I can just share my, my engineering side of the story. Oh, but no, to I me, think it's, you know, your, in, your engineering side. I was just going to say, we have a lot of hip hop artists, pop artists, um, ambient and instrumental. Um, just throwing some of the genres that are common on indie flow out there. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so in industries like what's the standard, right? Like you could ask that question about fashion and all different aspects of human life. Um, I think it's like it's you know it's like kind of like a normal distribution. You have like something that most people do, and if most people do it, there has to be something about it that makes a lot of sense, right? And then you have outliers, and as I said, it's about finding that balance, like. And the way we do it at Master Channel is we have a group of um, celebrity users who use us for all of their projects and we are in direct touch with them. And um, very frequently they report to us like, oh, can you take a look at this? Or can you maybe try this? Give me that feature. And I don't know, sometimes they also use an engineer, of course. And then they say, oh, I used that engineer and he did this thing. Is this something you can also do? Or it's the other way around where they say, oh, I liked what Master Channel did. The engineer wasn't able to replicate it. How the heck did you do this? And that's in that dialogue, we kind of see like, okay, this is probably like the main lane for decisions. And then there's always like, you know, sprinkles on top where we see like, oh, this is just one person that had that comment or that person that wanted that extra boost or something. And you can actually help shape how we move forward. We implemented a feedback feature. So when you get your master back, you can actually rate us. You can tell us, oh, this sucks or this is amazing. And then give us a comment and say like, you know, I think the industry standard, this is definitely not industry standard. And then, you know, we might get back to you and be like, well, can you be a bit more specific and tell us like, what didn't you like? What did you like? And all those things. So uh, very good question. Like, you know, it's 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 definitely not just one person or, or me saying or Christian saying like, this is how it's done. It's it's a constant process. Like this, the system now sounds different than it than what it sounded like one week ago. You know, it's, it's constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love the next question. From <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I was go ahead. Say too about um, because I mean, you reference this like the music industry is changing constantly. Our you know sonic influences and how music sounds is changing. So I'm assuming that as a company and AI, it's got to be dynamic and uh, able to change along with how music changes. Yes, totally. And the more users we get, the better. You know, the more people that message us and tell us like oh please change this the better we can become at this to make sure everyone's happy but um great question by laura are you planning to make any similar tools for mixing yes um Ooh. can't share any secrets but obviously we want to make everything simpler right like this is just the starting point for it and uh there's no reason to stop here this is only the beginning i so i think that's a great idea Yes, but obviously the, the more you move backwards in the production chain, the more complex it gets. And then also 
the more artistic it gets. And then obviously you still have to kind of not work against, but like at least consider people's concerns when it comes to AI and creative processes. And the way I usually see this, I see it as a co-pilot thing, right? Like we obviously still want humans to make the decisions, but we want to make it easier for them to actually execute, right? So for those type of scenarios, we, we will definitely have mixing solutions as well at some point. Yeah, that would be great. I think, um, you know, from uh, the listening sessions that we host here at IndieFlow, which are weekly opportunities for artists to play their music and get feedback from myself and their community, um, and artists share mastered tracks, but even more often they share work in progress. And I know that that, that mix and getting that sound correct is a, is a pain point for most artists, especially, you know, artist producers, which I think is, I mean, more and more musicians are artist producers because of the accessibility of production tools. Yes, totally so, agree. Yeah. All right, y'all, let's see. Any other questions um, for Simon before we log off here? Um, Sean says, definitely need to visit Norway. Please do. <laughs> When's the best time of year for that? Uh, I, I want to say we're nearing the end. I mean, I've only lived here for a year now, but mm -hmm. I want to say like May to early August is probably prime time. That's yeah. When it's, unless you want to go skiing or something, you know, like then it's kind of like the opposite. Then, then you have to come in winter. Got it. Awesome. Well, Simon, thank you so much for your time and energy today. I know I appreciate it and the community really appreciates your expertise. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Yeah. And so if you all are interested in checking out Master Channel, which you definitely need to take advantage of that free first free master, at least click on the link below. Um, it'll take you right to the Master Channel site. Um, again, if you want to sign up for IndieFlow with our $20 a month, we've got some links. Um, Laura dropped a few links in our chat channel. Check that out. If you guys come back to this workshop after we're done, the chat will still be there. So you can check out those examples that Simon gave, um, the uh, intro or the instructional video about how to prepare your mixes. And then I also dropped a link to your master channel playlist in there. So you Amazing. all can check out, you know, what artists are creating using master channel. So Awesome. Cool. Thank you well, so thank much. Thank you guys. all so much. Thank you, Simon. Thanks, Bye-bye. You guys later.